Lindicard to corporate world. A mentor kind of like talked me into corporate world, getting to a corporate world to follow his footsteps and telling me what is going on within the corporate world at the same time during his time. Now, the story has been told during the year 2012 and 2013. So if this outdated, I'm sorry. <laughs> so a bit of, um, you know, what made me really wanted to do number one uh, decode um, as um, those who that has a follow up. I talked about the uh, the corporate world, how, you know, I finally get to engage with two corporate workers in my corporate, during the corporate volunteer, where I volunteer every single Monday, uh, providing food for the homeless people. And it's very interesting how the updates are going on um, as they're shifting towards to the more humanity side. But this video is more talk about, uh, you know, what my mentors kind of guide me through and wanted me to get into the corporate world. So let's begin, let's go, let's go hard about this. So, where should I begin? You know, my mentor kind of wanted me, really, really wanted me to enter the corporate world because he feel of the, um, he taught me how certain corporate world or cer certain industry uh, within working in the office uh, will prolong the su my surviving rate if there is, um, you know, taught me like if there's something wrong with the economy or things like that, which are the jobs will first go and which first leave. He always encouraged me to apply for jobs for, for example, um, shipping freight companies or perhaps gold mining. Um, during that time, mining was uh, not gold mining, but gold and as well mining. Uh, during 2013, mining Australia was uh, still booming. Well, actually, it wasn't booming. Actually, it declined. Sorry, it declined. It really declined um, as the uh, China doesn't buy much from Australia. So, my mentor really wanted me to, um, you know, get my get me foot in the door in the corporate world by going through the call centers. But at the same time, he shares some stories about what is the corporate world he's like because he went from a call center to worked his way up to the IT field, uh, which is right now, I believe he's trying to work towards the project manager in IT, um, which he, you know, he sees me, I didn't have any degree or any great um, education background and he wanted me to follow his footsteps and how he had no degree within the IT industry, but how he make his way to it. So he told me a lot about, you know, guide me, you know, and you know the stories that he's being offloaded to me. I'm not sure is I don't I doubt his confidentiality, but it's uh, you know what is going on in the corporate world and it made me realize, wow, I did not know. Um, working a white collar job up there, it's not what you know expected. You know he told me in about, it's about the KPIs, it's about the stats. You know it's about you know like. Uh, you know, at work, you cannot joke around or anything like that. And which I wish he taught me about this a lot earlier about the PC culture. Um, I wish he told me about it. And as well, the um, what, you know, I wish he told me a lot more in greater details, which I did not know. So it's very um, looking back at it now. I wish he taught me in that side. But anywho, he just told me, like, what is going on with the industry? Uh, what certain type of groups, uh, their behavior and everything like that. So he was generalizing. I'm not saying I'm generalizing, but he's generalizing, telling me what I need to watch out and, you know, his offload, you know, what is going on. For example, uh, this level of the, this minority of this level of the building always pinch uh, his lunch and things like that and in the fridge, in the corporate world. So he's been telling me what's it like. And um, yeah, you, you just... Uh, you know, um, you know, some of these people are great on interview. They're great at faking, you know, their poker face on the interview. But when it comes to their work ethics, they're not like that, you know. And I'm, and I was there. I was young. I'm like, I won't be like that person, you know. I'm gonna be like, you know, working hard ethics because it's in my Chinese blood. Blah 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 blah. I'm just gonna be like that. But you know, it turns out I was one of them. <laughs> so I'll get to that story a bit towards the end. But let's focus on this first. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, 
you know, the stories that he's been telling me, you know, how workers are backstabbing or things like that just to get promotion or, or you know, being slacked off or things like that. It just, you know, for me as a kid who never enter or work in or dreamed of or working up in the high skyscraper buildings and, you know, hear these sort of stories and I say back in my head, I'm like, oh, damn, corporate world is so dangerous. Wow, I did not know. <laughs> it's so competitive. Oh, what? You have to do group interviews? Oh, I never heard about that. And, you know, he was doing some group interviews and he's been telling me who he hired and, you know, who he didn't hire and he tells me the mistakes that, you know, um, the other guy did and he shared the tips to me and things like that. Uh, you know, I need to nail my, you know, 15 or 20 job interview questions. I need to nail on top of my head. And I have to say back to him every single night, uh, which he really taught me um, how to get in, you know, get started within the corporate world. And um, it's very, uh, you know, it's very, very uh, interesting to see how the corporate world and, you know, for me to share stories in Lin Decode 1, uh, which I didn't go on a great deep depth detailed about you know what I did talk to them about but it just made me realize how um you know I was like you know geez I, I really admire them who works in the corporate world because the difficulty level and things like that and you know I, I shared about the job that only lasts for me one month um which I'm going to talk about the story now so I used to, you know, I followed my um, my mental guidance, how to apply for jobs and apply for 40 jobs each day. And I go through a lot of group interviews after group interviews. And I fail all the time and I felt like, you know, life is not worth it. You know, I just couldn't believe I'm like this, you know. And now, you know, when I landed in the corporate world job and I, I picked a lot of bad habits and it's like a new environment for me, I never been to an office or worked in this sort of strict environment and I wish I knew about the PC culture as well and uh, one thing that I mentioned um, you know to the you know to the um, to corporate volunteers who volunteer today which is today uh, and um, they told me you know things like that oh you know it's, it's that the corporate world is changing this and that uh, they're trying to change the culture but let's talk about uh, so I was working, the, I'll get back to the topic. So, <laughs> so I was working in this corporate world for uh, one month and I just very, had gone through training, pretty much two weeks training and I just jumped in the job and had to follow what, whatever was on the PDF and everything. I've made a lot of mistakes um, and as well I've break the, what's the word called? Um, I was being unprofessional, breaking the uh, boundaries and things like that. Um, and um, one of the things that I don't like about the job is um, you just can't not go to toilet breaks, whatever you want. Um, you always, always remain logged in. Um, always statuses has to be on on your computer screen. So when you work in this sort of industry, you can't just go do whatever you want. You just can't eat whatever you want. And I picked a lot of bad habits, like you know, I, I kind of need, or I was I needed something to fix my mouth or a fixation. I was eating you know like food while I was doing the call, which is very very unprofessional, um, because I'm this is a new environment. I never sat on the office chair for that long and this and that. So it's just how things gone and you know, um, my mentor guide me through all the way this and tells me, you know, I should work hard, I should focus and you know, always, always focus and things like that. I tried my best to follow what the PDF, the file, um, which is pretty much what's, this is like the, the Bible of the job, the PDF to go through all the stuff. And you know, I try to follow my landlord, and you know, uh, not not my landlord, my 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 mentor guidance every single day about this. They'll tell me what to do, this and that. But at the same time, I I I break I break the I'm um, <laughs> in the professionalism, and the culture is just uh, you know you you know when you go to this sort of uh, corporate world, they say oh you know. Our, you know, our, our organization, our services, is like we provide, deliver the best fun environment, this and that. 
were very happy environment and when I worked there for one month I didn't I didn't see any funny environment besides looking at the table tennis or perhaps the pool table that's about it and when it comes to Friday Mufti day um, or perhaps uh, one of the event they're trying to make a pirate or things like that uh, I, try, um, I began not to be noticeable and things like that and um, you know, it was a hard lesson for me to learn about corporate world. Um, I just wish that my supervisor didn't place me to one of the good-looking women on the level where all the guys who constantly go talk to this woman, a beautiful, attractive woman, and I'm just there, I'm like, this is torturing why am I placed in this area where everyone on the floor is trying to communicate with her? And, you know, like, obviously I try my best to be professionalism and things like that. Nothing went wrong, just to let you know, I didn't do anything stupid. Um, no sexual harassment or anything like that with her. But it's just annoying, you know, just to see, you know, the whole level just going up and talk to her and this and that. But I didn't tell my, my, um... You know, I didn't told my uh, mentor regards to that, but what I do find is the spacing is very, very narrowed and things like that. And I, I don't want to complain too much, but I, I would like to share the first time moments to you guys. I know it sounds really like whiny, things like that. Oh, bro, you're just lucky you just got a job that time, and then you're lucky you got hired. And I'm just there, I'm like, yeah, I am, but um, I just, I think. When I when I got my job sacked, um, it was based on the unprofessionalism on the call as I accidentally swore over the phone, which is not part of what the organ the the company is about, and I'm pretty sure um, I didn't pick up what everyone is. I was still on a probation, but the moment when I lost my job. Um, things just went downhill my mentor stopped talking to me it's like i gave you everything i prep you to enter the corporate world and now you screwed it up and we didn't communicate for pretty much let me just try to remember i lost the job in september we didn't communicate till the next year, January. And I felt like a huge letdown and going through all the mental health and things like that. I don't want this whole video to talk more about the sad story, but what I'm trying to say is my mental guidance, I failed. I failed, I failed him. Even though... I said to him, oh, you know, the stories that he's been telling me, oh, you know, Will, you know, I, you know, these people are like that when they're on the job interview, but when when they got the job, they're not like that. And I'm just sitting right next to him and say, yeah, I won't be like that person, you know? And then when you got laid off because of that, being unprofessional or not, not at the work level, I started to realize I'm such a selfish hypocrite during that time. It could have happened to any of us. Well, it's my first time ever been to the corporate world and um, I get to wear, you know, like, a, you know, you know, button up shirt, you know, black pants, leather shoes, and, you know, just, you know, I listen to my mental guidance, you know, like how to get a job and this and that. First time. I've ever got into a job, you know, a um, proper job where I thought I was stuck in retail the rest of my life, but um, I'll get nowhere pretty much or go back to building or things like that. And looking back at it now, uh, I did not know how the hell that I managed through all those group interviews. It made me a lot more stronger, I must admit, towards the end. The end interview wasn't a group interview, it was basically uh, an interview 
where major a lot of staff uh, decided decided to leave because of the um, um, the the company was um, sacking re rehire them for cheaper labor force, and I think during that time my supervisor my supervisor was on the holiday trip, but uh for this guy who interviewed me he was leaving and after when i left my job i started to realize oh a lot of people left there um i started to go on to seek.com.au and i was like what the heck i why are they on the job <laughs> job you know job search websites and um i remember when i was uh, during my two weeks training i started to realize I, I kind of knew this was a hint where I was hired because of due to the sack and rehired uh, of the cheaper labor force and I found that paper I don't know how, where did I find it I think I've, uh, someone dropped it and I just found it where um, I earned less than four dollars per hour uh, where the original role was uh, extra four dollars and that's why I have so passionate when I talk to the uh, corporate volunteers uh, based on Link Decode 1 and uh, about the stories about, you know, about the corporate world, what my mentor told me and, and how am I these two because, geez, working in that environment is tough, you know, like for me I can't even go to the toilet, whatever I can. And I know one of my cousins who just recently just dis a resigned from the bank as well and um, she cannot just freely go to the toilet and things like that. And he started to question me, it's like saying, well, when I spoke to two of the corporate uh, volunteers, they say, well, it's a way of discipline you to work harder, drive forward, not muck around, things like that. Back of my head, I'm like, mate, I'm just sitting in the office, I'm stressing out, I have oral fixation, I need to drink water. What if I drink too much water or I drink one cup of sip of water, I want to go to the toilet and next minute you can't go to the toilet because you're not supposed to go to the toilet at all. And think about it right now, if you can't go to the toilet, what is this job is designed for? Is this job is designed for robots because no human being can, you know, it's work for like four hours or three, four hours. So if you start at nine o'clock and your lunch break is at 12 or three hours and, you know, you've got your toilet break at 12, 12 o'clock. That's impossible. These jobs are made for robots and things like that. But, um. I look at my life right now, I'm no better. If I actually continue and didn't got sacked from the corporate world, God knows where I am right now. I think I'll be a lot more be better positioned than where I am. But you know what? There's a reason why I was being unprofessional. There's a reason why I got sacked and it was a lesson for me to learn. Even though I haven't learned or understood what's it like within the industry. But it made me be a lot more caution in a lot of areas. And that's the corporate world of my story and my mental guidance as well. Uh, the next video, even though I haven't talked about the introduction of uh, Lindis Deco 3. It's pretty much just talks about small businesses. Um, so yeah, I hope this new concept draw your attention. If not, I don't really mind. I just like talking to a screen with no camera on. I just like it.